Dr. Shabir, let's talk about Noah. We're continuing our series on the prophets in the Quran and the Bible. So our, our subject today is Noah. So mm -hmm. what is the similarity, what are the similarities and differences between the stories of Noah in the Quran and the Bible? Yeah, so um, let's start with the similarities then. Um, similarities are many. Uh, Noah is uh, a righteous man, uh, a prophet. Okay. And um, he um, lives at a time when, um, a, a long time ago, and uh, the, he, uh, I, I was going to mention the biblical side of this, that, you know, a time when there was a lot of corruption. Um, uh, but, but let me stick more to the similarities. Uh, and, and of course, it's not a major difference because the Quran basically presupposes that there is corruption. God sends a prophet to reform the people and, uh, and, and hence Noah is in this situation. Well, uh, the Bible goes more into the nature of the corruption. So uh, I'm going to stick with the similarities. So. Uh, he is uh, directed to build an ark, um, a boat, and, and God then uh, sends a flood. Uh, so Noah is to take uh, his, the believers into the ark um, together with some animals, um, and then God sends a flood, and the flood wipes out the people who had so disbelieved in Noah um, and uh, rescues, therefore, the believers who then start a new population. Mm -hmm. uh, so th that, that's basically the story of Noah in both the Bible and the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, how long did it take to, for Noah to build this flood? And, and what were people's reactions? Because I, I understand, at least in the Quranic narrative, that people were ridiculing him and making fun of him because he was building this ark, you know, in the middle of bare land. You know, there was no water around. Um, and he just seemed like a crazy man. Yeah. Is that the same uh, similar story uh, similar, in the Bible? Similar um, story in, in the Bible. And um, uh, in, in the biblical narrative, it says that people had become so depraved, uh, as, as described in Genesis chapter 6, uh, that uh, God repented uh, for the fact that he had made uh, human beings. And uh, he thought that, well, my, I'm not going to put up with human beings like this. So he decided almost like to wipe them out and start over. Mm -hmm. So the flood is presented in the Bible as though it is a universal flood, like all human beings uh, are going to be wiped out by this, except for the family of Noah. And uh, previously I mentioned believers. Well, the, the Quran uh, gives it as a contest between believers and non-believers. God comes in and saves the, the believers. Um, in, in the biblical narrative, it is uh, the family of, of Noah that is saved like this. And one might presume that they are believers, but that does not seem to be the cutting edge, uh, the, the divisive factor between uh, those who are in the ark and those who are not. It looks like just family. Uh, in, in any case, uh, the uh, flood uh, lasts for a long time, uh, some 150 days. Uh, so it's a good and thorough job of uh, demolishing everything else. And then Noah comes out together with the animals. Uh, he plants the vine and um, eventually reaps the grapes and uh, presses that into wine and he drinks it and becomes drunk. Mm -hmm. Apparently he's the first winemaker, is that correct? That would be the first person in history that we know to have made wine. I mean, if anyone else made it before him, that, that is not recorded. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, in, in the Muslim mind, this would be really shocking because, you know, we think of prophets as very righteous individuals and I, think, I don't think that account is described at all in the Quran. No. And Muslims will obviously start with the presupposition that uh, previous prophets would not have uh, uh, drank wine like and become drunk because mm -hmm. the, um, the Quran prohibits us from drinking wine. Uh, so how do we understand then the uh, narrative to make a side comment here about Jesus on whom be peace that, uh, you know, in his time, um, Jews may have uh, presented wine at the table and it's mm -hmm. mentioned in the Gospels that he passed around the wine. Um, so did he himself drink it? And um, so th these are questions in the Muslim mm -hmm. mind. Now, it, it may it be possible that uh, in a previous um, a set of legislations from God uh, that a certain uh, amount of wine was permitted so long as it doesn't make a person drunk uh, because we see that drunkenness is condemned in the Bible okay. uh, but drinking a little wine is not condemned. In fact, uh, in one passage in Paul's writings, it is even said uh, that it's good for you to drink a little bit of wine. Um, so, 
what was it in the case of Noah then? Uh, was it that all wine would have been permitted uh, or, um, uh, you know, to that extent, would have been permitted for him to become drunk? So one has to say we, we, we don't know. We don't know what was the legislation at that time, but the Muslim priest opposition seems to count against it, and the Quranic story does not um, uh, seem to support that. And, and, and what is also uh, surprising for the Muslim from the Muslim point of view is that as a result of his drinking the wine uh, and becoming drunk, he lay naked. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, when his sons uh, came in, uh, they had to walk backwards carrying a sheet, which they then dropped over his body mm -hmm. to avoid uh, seeing their father's nakedness. Um, and I believe when he discovered, you know, what had happened, then he cursed his grandchild. Th these are all things that, you know, for a Muslim, this would be very, very problematic, right, in, within the Muslim Yes, narrative. because the Muslim perception of a prophet is one who is a noble very figure, is upright, very yes. morally upright individual. He gives us an example. We need to copy his behavior and be like these great mm -hmm. prophets. Uh, so um, it, it does not seem to be exemplary behavior from a Muslim point of view. Uh, but of course, Muslims need to know that story, to understand it and know it from its source so that when we have conversations with our Christian and Jewish friends, uh, we know specifically what, what the previous scriptures do say about these, uh, these great figures. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the flood again. I mean, we, 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 we're moving forward, then backwards. But you know, we, we understand that um, within the Quranic narrative, Noah took, his, uh, took the righteous believers, as you mentioned, but he left behind his son. Whereas in the biblical narrative, he took his entire family. So there's a difference there, right? Yes. So what the Quran is doing here is to show that uh, the it is a matter of belief, regardless of whether your family relations. Uh, if you uh, happen to come from a noble family, it doesn't mean that you yourself is noble. So you yourself are noble. Uh, so Noah's son came from the most noble of families at the time, but he himself was a disbeliever in God. And so he joins the disbelievers. He uh, gets a similar fate as, as they do. Um, and, and the opposite could be true in, in Quranic stories. Uh, somebody may come from a family that is uh, basically despicable, but uh, that one individual stands up for noble teachings and, and tries to do the right things, and, and that person then becomes uh, favored by God. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, 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 it comes down to you as an individual. It, there is also a lesson in the Quranic narrative for families in, in general. Like uh, as a noble family, uh, you might be shocked uh, and find it very difficult to, to accept that one of your family members uh, is not uh, towing the line. They, they have an individual personality and uh, they want to exercise their rights, freedom of expression, freedom of belief, and they're not going to believe as the rest of the family family does. So what are you going to do? There's a lot of Muslims uh, who are, are heartbroken. There are a lot of Muslims who are heartbroken because uh, their child uh, is, is, is not on the same faith as they are. But it happens even to the prophets, right? It, it can happen even in the case of the prophets. And here we have the prophet Noah and his son does not believe as he does. So uh, the best of us cannot uh, ensure that our children are going to have the same faith as we. We're, we're going to try. Uh, but if we fail, then we, we know we have a story like this to fall back on and to have some assurance that this is the nature of life. Mm -hmm. We cannot change everything. So let's talk about the people who survived. Are those supposed to be our uh, ancestors? How does it work? Mm, they, uh, if we take the view that uh, all of the people were killed except for those who um, were in the ark, then they would have to be the progenitors of the rest of humankind. And uh, uh, scientifically, this uh, here becomes a difficult uh, theory to accept uh, because of the diversity of the, of the human population. And, and of course, uh, no scientific theory would have it that all human populations go back to that one at, um, place uh, just a few thousand years ago, uh, as described in the biblical uh, narrative. Uh, some Muslim scholars uh, have uh, taken this uh, as uh, the, the view to hold as a Muslim, thinking that the entire world population was um, uh, decimated in this uh, flood. 
and that only the people of Nu uh, or Noah uh, are, are the progenitors. Uh, but, but that's not specified in the Quran itself. In the Quran, it seems that this is, uh, was more of a local flood. Because again, the Quran is showing that this is what happens when the prophet comes, he preaches to the people, he tries to get them reformed. They do not reform, but instead they try to kill the prophet. Uh, and uh, it, it's they that get the punishment from God. So there's no reason from this story to imagine that God is punishing people all around the entire globe. Mm -hmm. uh, more so, there's no reason to think that God is going to wipe out all of the animals as well from all of the rest of, of the earth. And uh, that too becomes a scientific problem if you think that uh, only the animals which were in the ark become now uh, the progenitors of the, uh, of the entire animal kingdom uh, because there is such diversity, uh, vast numbers of species, that it's hard for scientists to imagine how all of this could have come from that from those animals which were in the ark of, of Noah. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to end soon, but is there any last thing that you'd like to add relating to the stories of Noah? Well, we can mention also something from archaeology. Um, the, there is a book on uh, the Bible is history by Werner Keller, and uh, he cites uh, the um, findings of a certain archaeologist, uh, Sir Leonard Woolley, uh, who um, did a lot of work to uh, find out about the nature of this flood, and he could not find any evidence of a universal flood uh, from uh, some 4,000 years ago. And so here too we have corroborating evidence to point towards uh, a, a more local flood. And, and that fits within the Quranic narrative that Noah was preaching to his people. The Bible calls him a prophet, uh, but the Bible doesn't show him actually preaching to people and trying to reform them. But the, in the Quranic narrative, it is clear, for, especially from the 71st chapter of the Quran, that he's trying every which way to get his people to reform. He's preaching to them aloud, silently, meeting with them in person, and, uh, you know, making public talks and so on. But uh, people, instead of listening to him, they turn away, they uh, ridicule him, they mock him, and eventually they also uh, plot against his life. And, and it is then that, that he prays uh, to God for uh, God's uh, succor, his help, and, uh, and he's given the help in the form of this flood that wipes out the people. Dr. Shibirali, thank you for your time. You're welcome.